be? Well, I mean, uh, when he goes in the water, it's going to like displace the water a bit. So, um, yeah, a little, a little more? bit more than that. Uh, just a little okay. bit more. You're nearly there. Uh, you, you were like a Roman Catholic in the past, yeah? Uh, yes, a Catholic in the past, yes. When you were a baby. <laughs> yeah, I was baptized as a Catholic with my, my parents. As a child. As a child. Back in, back in Italy. Uh, no, actually here. I'm not from Italy. Um, my parents are Italian. I'm from Canada. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm not a true Italian. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the middle. <laughs> Just a pizza oh, eater. Okay. Um, well, let's start with a prayer, shall we? Let, let, let's start with a prayer. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we rejoice, Father, that, that Carlo has come to know you and to know your Son and his saving grace and wishes to give his life to you and to be covered in the blood of your dear Son and to have the sure hope of eternal life through him and in him. Please be with him and fill him with your Holy Spirit and, and guide him and sanctify him and bless him in absolutely every way to your glory. Be with him in this life. And also, above all, of course, in that which is to come. For Jesus' sake. Amen. 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 <laughs> so, um, Jesus says that it, it's like a woman who's lost a coin, one of her ten coins that she's lost, and she searches until she finds it. And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together. If you know the story in Luke 15. And in those days, a woman didn't have anything. She, she didn't even own her own body. Everything belonged to her husband. But the one thing she did have was her 10 coins she got given when she got married, and she wore them around her head. And if one of them got lost, it meant that she'd lost something very personal. And so she searched for it until she found it. And when she found it, she's so happy she calls her friends and neighbors together. And that's like you and me, that we were lost, but we have been found. And yeah. in, in that sense, God is in search of man. And yet we also, in our own way, have searched for God like, like, like you have, like we all have. And we've been searching for him and he has searched for us. And we have met. And there is that electric moment when God meets man, when he is in search for us and we are in search for him and we have met. And that's why it says that, as it were, all heaven is kind of electric with joy because of this. And so that is what's happened when we, we meet with him. And that is what's happening now. And it, it sounds, looks like so bizarre that a, a guy in Canada goes into a bathtub. Um, <laughs> but, you know, God is there and Jesus is there with you. Absolutely. It's a bit like when Jesus was resurrected. I mean, when you go in the water, it's like death with Jesus. When you come out of the water, it's like resurrection, his resurrection. When Jesus rose from the dead, there was actually nobody waiting there to shake hands with him and say, you know, good job, well done, you know. There was nobody who came out. And there was Mary Magdalene there. And she thinks he's the gardener. And she's like, hey there, mister, what have you done with the, with the body, huh? <laughs> and then Jesus basically says, uh, <laughs> Mary, <laughs> it's you. And my point is that he was not standing there like with a sort of shiny face with a halo around his head, like, you know, those sort of Catholic pictures of, of Jesus. He was there looking very normal and very ordinary. And <laughs> Of course, although he was the son of God and was now resurrected to be Lord of, of the cosmos. Mm -hmm. And so it is with you and me. When you come out of the water of baptism, you, it's also ordinary on one level, just like Jesus. He came out and stood there looking like a gardener. And then he <laughs> says, you know, hey there, mister, what have you done with the body? And <laughs> so th that's kind of how it is. Uh, also, you come out of the water. So it's like, oh, hang, you know, like it's just normal. And yet, this is the whole mystery, if I might use that sort of word. I know you're sort of out of the Catholics now, and they like using that word, but, you know, um, it, this is the mystery, that in the midst of the very ordinary, you know, a guy in, in his bathtub uh, in a, you know, in a domestic setting in, in you know, modern Canada, there is Jesus and there is God involved right up there from in our lives. 
And this is how it will continue by, by his grace. So there's a, a little section in the Bible that talks just about baptism. And I'm going to ask Jim if he could read that. It's Romans chapter 6 from verse 1 to verse 10. <clears throat> Okay, Romans uh, chapter 6, the first 10 verses. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death in order that just as Jesus was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we've been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we've died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. <laughs> nice, Jim. So then, you, so, so then you, you see there how we are going to live, and you're going to live in newness of life, in newness of life. That somehow life in the spirit, life with Jesus, with him in you and you in him, is never boring. There is this newness. There is this continual creation. If any man is in Christ, Paul says, and you are becoming in Christ by baptism into him, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have become new, and the old has passed away. So no longer are we victims, as it were, of the, the ties that bind. But I have no option but to be this way or that way because that is how I was, that is how I was raised, it is you know, what is there in my background. We are made new. We will walk in newness of life. And there is this wonderful promise of the Spirit that the love of God, Paul says, is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit which is given unto us. That we are made new within and this is really man's greatest need, not only to be forgiven, but actually to be changed mentally, to have a new psychology, a new pair of eyes, to just have another mind, to be looking at it, to be mentally different, uh, as, as it were. And that is where we are given this help. Galatians 4. We were adopted, we are told. We were adopted into God's family. And because we are sons, adopted children, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into our hearts, whereby we cry, Abba, Daddy, Father. Abba in Aramaic means, means Daddy. So in those days, in the first century, just in the Greco-Roman world, as perhaps in parts of the world today, if you adopted a child, you could never, ever disown it. You could disown your own child, but you could not adopt a child and disown it. So if you were an adopted child, your adopted father could never disown you. You could walk away from him and disown him, but he, will never dis he would never disown you. If you were his physical son, yeah, he could disown you. So you and me, we are adopted children. We are adopted sons, and he will never, ever disown us. He will never get tired of us and chuck us off or just dislike us and say, no, I've had enough with you. Never. You and me may walk away from him, sadly. There's always, sadly, that possibility. They, you know, you're not a kid. Like, you know, we've seen life. We, we, we know what is out there, and we don't want to go back to all that stuff. So that we have been adopted. And because of that, 
God has sent forth the spirit of his son into our hearts, whereby we call him Abba, Daddy. This is transformation. This is something that happens inside our heart or our mind because he wants to bring us through to his kingdom. Last uh, bit of the Bible stuff I'd like to say is that Paul says in 1 Corinthians 10 that we are baptized into Jesus just as Israel were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. So Israel were in Egypt, they were slaves, and they'd wanted out, just like we were in this world, but we wanted out. And so God led them to the Red Sea, and the Red Sea opened, and there was water both sides of them, and on top of them was a cloud. Now a cloud is just water. And so in that sense, they were covered in water, as you're going to be covered in water. And that was like baptism. So they were in Egypt, they go through the water, and they come out the other side, not actually in the promised land, but in the desert, in the wilderness. And they had to walk through the wilderness in order to get to the promised land. So we're bad. We, when we get baptized, you then come out into the desert and he will be with you. He will feed you. And we need not fear what shall happen to us because we will be guided. They were guided in the pillar of fire by night and the pillar of cloud in the daytime that you will be led. Now, unfortunately, Israel wanted to get back to Egypt. And there is in in human nature, I think, the tendency to think that the past was better. When I was a young guy, life was great. Now life is not so good and the future is frankly terrible. Whereas in Christ, it's the other way. The past was, was crap. You know, the past was Egypt. Now is much better. And the future is glorious. The future is eternity. Absolutely, eternity. Yeah. The best is ahead, not, not back there. The best is yet to come. So I don't know if uh, Jim or Anne or Carissa, would you all like to say something or add your sure. thoughts? Yeah, well, I'd be uh, happy to share a few thoughts, Carlos. Uh, baptism is a glorious day. It, it's a bit of a pivot point in your entire life where you really walk away from the Egypt part of your life to, to the life in, with God. And just as Duncan was sharing with you that we, we call him Abba, like daddy, like father. He is our father. And what we are doing in baptism is we're making this shift in our life where we give ourselves over to him and to his ways. We allow him to mold us to shape us, to raise us up as children, to be his forever. He's teaching us how to live in paradise to come, and he wants us there. But the responsibility for us personally is giving ourselves over. And that's really where the conversion is. It's a paradigm shift from the old self to the new self. It's symbolized in the baptism, but the actual conversion Sometimes it's for some people, even before they went to the baptism, some people that it's that day, that time, and other people, even sometimes later, before they really, they really got it. They absorbed it mentally and says, this is too big not to be a part of it. And they completely mm-hmm. devote themselves to it. And I would, I would encourage you strongly do that because what you really gain from this is a different perspective of life. It's no longer this few decades that we walk in a mortal dispensation with the challenges of this life. It's a view to the life to come. If we're talking about eternal life in God's kingdom, a few decades here in this mortality doesn't compare. And when we adapt that perspective, we see that that's alive in our mind. We are happy to give ourselves over to the father and the father in his love not only gave us Jesus for the sacrifice that allows us to be forgiven, which is wonderful because we'd all perish without it, but he also gave us Jesus to be, to teach us that way and to be an example of it, to show, look, this is how you live your life. And my father will raise you up to be his forever. And you will all be children of God in that kingdom. And so I pray as you go into these waters, you turn away from a life that you knew to a life that you're growing into and you give yourself over to Jesus Christ and to the Father fully. And in so doing, we will know each other for eternity in that kingdom to come.
Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Amen. Yeah, he's very, very excited. <laughs> um, I, I had um, oh, I can't see you, Carissa. So I got baptized two weeks ago. You know, my life has changed, and the Lord is just amazing. He is just amazing, and um, I, you know, I've changed. He's changed me by the power of, and the grace of God. Like it wasn't me by myself. In 14 days, you know, I used to smoke marijuana, and I asked him. I said, Lord, if you, you know, remove this from me. I will follow you. I will do what you want. I don't want to like the smell of it, the taste of it. And please do this before I get baptized. Because I knew when I was going to get baptized. Four days before I got baptized, the smell I hated, the taste I hated. I just didn't like it. I was changed. And I was like, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And that was, and then I, that was it. And there's no going back. You know, he's so excited. He's so happy. <laughs> and I'm just so happy. Like we completely changed. He saw me change. It was just natural for him. He stopped smoking marijuana. He doesn't swear I bought him a Bible. And he's, he's not a person that reads. Now he reads all the time. He reads at work. He talks about Jesus. He tells his friends. They're changing. It's a, it's a chain reaction. It's amazing. It's amazing. amazing. It's amazing. So um, this was his vision. And I thank the Lord. And I, I thank you guys. Because I found you accidentally. So no, it, not, it, not, not accidentally. I don't agree with that. No, no random in our lives. Yeah, and I'm so happy. Like, I'm just so happy. Uh, I'm just so happy. I'm just so happy that we're part of this eternal family and we want to worship and serve him and spread the word and follow the laws. You know, we're dedicated. You know, he's given so much and I just want to thank him. I'm just so excited. Amen. Completely different in a good way. Yeah, you know? Yeah. yeah, in a good way. It's his turn. It's his turn. And we're happy. We're so excited. And we bless you guys. We yes. thank you. Yes. Thank, thank you. you. I just like to make a brief comment. Um, I can see from your enthusiasm how you feel about baptism. Hmm? And I just wanted to share. I remember my baptism was 1989. Wow. And it's, so it's been a long time. But <laughs> what, I, what I have realized now as I look back at that time, I sort of visualized it as the end. You learn, you study, you make the decision, and you get baptized. But yeah. what I realize now is it was just the beginning. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I'm sure you will find that too. <laughs> Along the way, you'll meet some wonderful people. And, you know, it's just, it's a wonderful trip. Yeah, yeah. it's beautiful. And We're it's just a beautiful so vaccination. True. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Want, um, why do you want to get baptized? I honestly, like she said already, I I've been smoking marijuana for thirty years. I've been I've been addicted to it for thirty years, and when he um, opened my, you look like you're twenty five. <laughs> <laughs> He literally opened my eyes and I literally dropped it just like that. And I've been wanting to stop it for a while. I never could, but he gave me the strength to just let it go, give up. And that was it. And I, I, I'm so happy for that. Um, I love him. He's been so great to me. And things been so positive for me in life ever since. Um, yeah, the way the world's going this, these days is you have to really, really keep positive and everything. And I thank him for it because he's opened my eyes and I just... It's like I said, it's a, it's a new life I'm going to have. And I'm, I'm so excited, honestly. <laughs> <I'm so> excited. <laughs> the old has passed away and all things become new and you live in that newness of life. Yeah. We, it's not like change where it's a bad change. Oh, oh did we lose it? No, no, we're here. Okay. Yeah, it's not change where it's a bad change. It's a beautiful change. I'm not, we don't regret it. No. Like every day is something new. And the funny thing is you saw, we saw with the human eyes before the fleshy eyes after like I've seen sp with spiritual eyes. Now Yeah, we observe different things. When we watch things, we're like, Oh, they shouldn't be saying that. And it, it's just a different, you know, in a good way, in a good way. So there's nothing that we're missing. I don't regret it. It's just beautiful. I don't have a want a need for any distraction. You know, like I said, I want, the Lord and Savior to be my distraction and my addiction. Yes. That is what I crave. Yes. I crave eternal life. You know, I'm not just repenting and we're not just giving our lives to him because, oh, we 
no, no, no. It's not only that. It's because we love him. We know what he's done for us. And we want us to be surrounded by positivity and, you know, be in the, I want to meet Moses and all Abraham and everybody else. You know, I want to, I want to worship at his feet and, you know, sing for him. I just want to meet him and just, I want to be able to, we want to be able to spread the word. He's already doing with that with people at work that wouldn't, you would never think they're like that. Now they talk to him about certain things. It's, yeah, it's contagious and I love it. It's a contagious thing. Yeah, no, man. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, how did you, you say, you know, Kalisa, that, that you, you came in a touch with us by chance? I mean, how, how was it? Because I, know, uh, I always love to hear how the Lord works because yeah. there's no chance, there's no random, you know, it's all in God's. Yeah. All in well, God's I pray for a lot of things, you know, and He answers my prayers within like three or four or five minutes, you know, through Abishai's or whatnot. But one day I was sitting down and I feel like He's coming back soon and i don't want to be i don't i want to be sober something available that I, I don't have to wait because i know you don't want us to wait if you know you want us to follow you as soon as possible so i went on google and i typed in baptism in toronto and your link popped up with the gentleman in the laying down in the tub and then i saw the beautiful sister she was speaking and i was and then i read a little bit of the page and i was like yes and i saw the whatsapp and i was like yes that's perfect that's perfect. So that's how I found you. I prayed to the Lord. You know, we're just so happy. We're so blessed to find you. You know, we're so happy. Well, yeah. God and man come come into meeting together. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, <clears throat> so uh, like Carol, you. I'll ask you the uh, the question as I <laughs> ask folks: uh, Do you believe the things about the kingdom of God and about the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? Yes. Yes. I know you do. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus. As you know, and you go into the water, it's like death with Jesus. You come up out of the water, it's like resurrection with him. Now, practically, I suggest that you put your head um, up the end where the taps are, it's slightly deeper there usually, and that you get on your side and pull your arm up last so you're in like a fetal position yeah that's right so you're going down so your whole head can go down and uh, i'm sure carissa you can just push uh, push any bit of the body that's above the water i'm sure you can just push it under for him <laughs> yeah okay. should i go in yeah now's okay. the time <laughs> so you're going to baptize you in the name of the lord jesus christ okay okay yeah go down that's it go down yeah right down under death and resurrection yay yay <laughs> Oh, wonderful. Heavenly Father, with all our heart, Lord Jesus, we pray that you will fully enter into Kalu. Please be with him and bless him and guide him to the end and love him all over to the end and bring him to your kingdom. Save him and fill him and sanctify him and bless him now and forevermore. For Jesus' sake, amen. 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 Congratulations. God bless you, brother. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> so happy. Oh, God bless you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> you are a brother of Christ now. Yes. Yes. <laughs> we will be having a party in heaven. <laughs> the angels are rejoicing as we speak. Another one was lost. And it's now found in, in, in the righteousness of Christ, our Lord and Savior. That's right. A lost sheep has come back. Yes. yes. Praise God. Praise God. Yeah. Yeah. Praise Thank God. You. Thank, Thank you. God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Perfect. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. So what do we do now? Uh, we'll get out of the bathtub. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the, 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 these are your first steps in the wilderness. And your you know, first step the, on, into reality. Yeah, yeah, but they went through the wilderness and um, God fed them every day with manna. And mm. uh, 
I can use the app to uh, read the Bible every day. That's the thing. Uh, read yeah. The yeah, the he reads the app at work, and he has a Bible here. We read it. Thank Jim, you. Uh, Jim uh, and then they actually run a um, like a, a Bible study on, uh, I think, Wednesday nights. Um, okay. And I also do a uh, communion service on Sunday mornings, but it won't be very convenient your time because it's... Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, it would be four o'clock in the morning your time. So I mean, I hope yeah. you're <laughs> tucked up in bed and uh, behaving yourself. So uh, I, I guess I um, that's right, Duncan. Uh, it would be the same time zone as them. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I've been wanting to do some Bible studies. Um, so th that's that's perfect. Yeah. yeah, I'm just in Kingston. I'm north of Kingston. Okay. Oh, okay. That's perfect. perfect. Same timing. Wonderful. Okay. At least, and now we have Zoom, so it's perfect. Yeah. Uh, if you can get their email, Duncan, I'll I'll send them an invitation for that. Yeah, you can definitely, Duncan. You can forward my emails uh, to the sister and brother. Absolutely. Yeah. Sure. Okay, I'll be yeah, in touch yeah. with you. Okay. Perfect. Okay. okay. Thank um, you so much for letting us share. Thank you. Very That's special great. time. Yes, it's it been is. a real thank blessing you. for us. And <laughs> you. Oh, thank you, you so much. much. May God continue to bless you guys and keep you safe and, you know, be with you. I, I pray right now that the Lord or Savior, you know, puts his arms around each and every one of you guys and, and give you the biggest hug and just let you know that we are so thankful. We are so thankful. And I pray that the Lord reveals himself to you guys tonight as a thank you or in his own time, but he will. You guys are blessed. You guys are amazing. Well, God bless yeah. you both. Yeah, God bless you. And, uh, Thank you, you know, so much. We'll, we'll be in touch. And, uh, for sure, for sure. We'll definitely yeah, connect. Zoom is a great thing. And uh, <laughs> as I say, Jim's got his thing on uh, Wednesday evenings, I, I do believe your time. And okay. uh, we'll we'll keep in touch. And, uh, definitely. Yeah, definitely. You can send me the info and then we'll join for yeah, sure. Definitely. All right. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you so much, guys. Bye. Bye. God bless you. Bye. <laughs> Have a good day. Bye. Nice to meet you both. God bless. Bye, Duncan. Thank you.